If you've ever wanted to learn how to create a game like Scramoji Island, then this video is for you. On July 10th, 2020, Wishforge Games first introduced Scramoji Island to the world. It was developed as a physics-based puzzle platformer, packed with crazy actions, color graphics, and lots of challenging levels. You see, what started out with this innovative mechanics gradually evolved into something reminiscent of Angry Birds. The art was beautiful, and the gameplay was engaging. After some research, it seems we might never get the final release of the game. His website no longer exists, and his Twitter Accounts has been rebranded, but don't worry, in this video we'll go over all the core mechanics of the game so you can learn how it works. Before we get started, this is what our project is going to look like by the time we're done. So we have our body objects here, we have the eyes, and if I hold down my left mouse button, I have a line drawn from the center of the body object to where I have my cursor on the screen. If I release it, it's going to add a force to the body object depending on the length of this line. So a short line is going to move slightly, a longer line is going to move much further. We also have this number at the top left. A number should determine how many moves you have left. So if I move once, it's going to subtract one again, it's going to subtract one again, and it's going to subtract another again and again. If I have no move left, it's going to restart all over again. So let's get started with this. Okay, so here I have a scene with all the objects we're going to need. We have the body objects, we have the floor objects, we have the props, which are this. We have a line object, we have a black object, I'm going to explain this later on. We have the eyes object, we have a counter, which is going to be the text here, and we have the end object. Now the first thing we need to do is add a physics behavior to our body objects. So to do that, you can double click on the body object. So if I double click on this, I go into behaviors. I can go ahead and add a behavior. For this, we'll add in the physics engine 2.0 behavior. Now pay attention to the type as this is very important. So for this we'll have us as dynamic which is a default type. Let's go ahead and apply this. Now if we preview this our body object should fall. There we go. What we need to do now is give the floor a physics 2.0 behavior. So back in here let's go into our floor. Double click behaviors. Let's add a behavior and for this we're going to add in our physics engine 2.0 and the type is going to be static. Gravity has no effect on static objects. So let's apply this and once again preview our body object now falls on the platform. Now let's create an event that's going to draw a line from our body objects to where we have our cursor on the screen. So to do this in our events, let's go ahead and add an event group. So I'll name my group body and in here, let's add another event, another group. Let's call this line. Let's add a new sub event and in here we can add a condition. Our condition is going to check if our mouse button is down or touch hold and the button we're going to check for is the left button. Okay, now for the action, we need to select our line object. And in here, let's get the line. And we're going to draw a line from the body center. That's the X position all the way. And on the Y position, we'll draw it from the body center Y all the way to the cursor X to where we have our cursor Y. So this should draw a line from the body all the way to where we have our cursor. Or well, thickness, we can set this to file, okay? If we preview this, we have a preview. And if I have my left mouse button, it draws a line. So there we go. But well, there's one problem here. It's drawing a line relative to the line object's position in the scene. To fix this, let's go into our scene. Let's go into our line properties. And you need to uncheck, draw the shapes related to the object's position on the screen. So with that unchecked, you can run a preview. And if I hold down my left mouse button, you can see the line now. Now let's add a force to our body object. In our game events, let's add a new event. And in here, we're going to check if the mouse button is released. Let's so if this mouse button is released, we need to add the body, a force, and this is going to be an angle force. We need to add it, for now let's use 45, and the length, we need to get the length of the line. So to do this, we can make use of the expression, distance between positions. So the first point, x position, is going to be crucial x. The second point is going to be crucial y. The third point is going to be, which is also going to be our second point, x position. This is going to be our body, center x. And the fourth point is going to be our body center Y. On the first application point, we can set this to our body mass center X as the same body mass center Y. We apply this and preview. Now if I draw the line, our body object should move. Now it's adding a force towards the angle of 45. So here we go. And now this force depends on the length of our line. So if we have a very long line, it's going to add a larger force. There we go. 
Now we don't want it adding a force of angle 45 all the time, so we need to come up with a fix for this. Now one method you can use is to have an object rotate in the direction of the mouse, then we can use the object angle as the angle the object should move in. Now if you don't understand this now, uh, we're going to implement it real quick. So let's go into our begin, and in here we have this object which I've named black. Now if we come into our game events, let's create a new event group, let's call this black, add in a new event, and in here we can add an action to rotate black a position which is our crystal x and our crystal y and for the angular speed we need an immediate rotation so we're going to set this to zero okay now if we preview this you can see we have our black object rotating in the direction of the mouse now we need to position our black object on our body object so let's close this add an event let's add an action and let's set the center position of our black object to our body center x and our body center y Premium. Now we now have the black objects positioned at the center of our body object. Now we can make use of this angle that's set in here. So instead of 45, we can get the black angle. And let's add 180 to it. And if we draw a line and let's uh, track this, it moves in the opposite direction here. Now like I said earlier, the force depends on the length of the line. So if we have a longer line, goes much higher or it adds a higher force and shorter line adds a smaller force. Now we also need to add a physics 2.0 behavior to our props object. We want our body object to be able to collide with it. So to do this, let's go into our begin. Let's select our props behaviors. Let's add the physics 2.0 behavior. In here, we can have the type as dynamic, run a preview, and here we go. Our body object is now able to collide with our props object. Now at this point, we need to add in a camera for our body object. To do this, I'm making use of an extension which is called the Smooth Camera Extension. So if you don't know how to add in extensions, all you need to do is click on this plus sign here and you should be able to search for Smooth Camera. So I already have this installed. If you don't, you can click on this and you should see install right here. So with this, we can go into our body objects, behaviors, add a behavior and we can add the Smooth Camera behavior. Now pay attention, we have the Smooth Camera and we have the Smooth Plasma Camera. So this is reserved or platformer and you can use this for your own projects. So let's select this and apply. Preview this and the camera should now follow our body object. Here we have the sludge force. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and add eyes for our body objects. So in here I have the eyes object. I also have two instances of the eyes object in the scene. We can change the size of the eyes object to 20 by 20. Let's only link that. Now this at 20 by 20. Now we can position this by making use of points. Let's go into our body object. Let's go into edit points. And in here we can add two points. Our first point is going to be RI and our second point is going to be LI. This should represent the right eye and this should represent the left eye. So on the Y we can use 20 and 20 and for the right we can use 60 and 20. Now we need to position two instances of our eyes at this point. Let's close this, apply. Let's go into our events. Let's create a new group. Drag this in. Let's call this eyes in here we can select our eyes and we can say position center position and we can set the center position of this to body point x and we need to set the name of the points for this we'll set this to our right eye or copy this paste it now the y position we we'll set this to body point y and name of the point will be right eye here we go now let's do this for our left eye so I'll go ahead and copy and paste and let's change this to our left eye we'll set this to left eye and left eye so here's a quick question. I have these two actions here, and do you think these two actions are going to give me the required outcome? You can leave your answers in the comments below. So I'll give it three seconds. Sadly, this won't work. When GDevelop executes events, it runs from the top to the bottom. So on the first action, it moves all the I instances to the right point. And on the second action, it moves all the instances of eyes to the left. And that's why we have it at the left. A quick way to visualize this is to add a wait action. So let's say wait three seconds. 
I'm going to place this in between our two actions and let's add a condition at the beginning of the scene. So if we preview this, it should move from the right point to the left point. So right now we have it, this is it on the right and it should move to the left at the three seconds. So that's what's happening here. Now how can we fix this? We can make use of instance variables. Now each instance of our eyes object is going to have its own ID and we can make use of this ID to properly position it. So to add instance variables, we need to select our eyes object. So it's going to variables, let's add a variable. And for this, I'll name my variable ID. You can name this whatever you want but i prefer naming it id so set the type to a number let's apply to identify this we need to give them different numbers so we set this as zero and we set this as one now we can make use of this id to position them so let's go into our events let's add a new event in here we're going to add a condition set eyes and search for variable now we'll make use of a number variable the number variable and the type is id we need to set this to zero so if the ID of eyes is equal to zero, we need it to be positioned at the right and let's copy paste. And if the ID of eyes is one, we need this to be positioned at the left. And we don't need this anymore. So let's delete, delete. And if we preview this, you can see we have our eyes properly positioned. Now we can quickly rotate our eyes by making use of the angle of our black objects. So let's add a new fence. Let's add an action. Let's select eyes and rotate towards an angle, which would be black angle with an angular speed of zero, which should be an immediate rotation. Okay, preview. And here we go. So currently it's looking at the mouse. We don't want this. I want it to look at the opposite direction. So we can quickly do this by adding 180 to it. Preview and we have this now we need our body object to rotate so we need to make use of a torque so for that we need to close this and in here once the left mouse button is released we can add an action let's select 40 and let's select torque select this and for this we're going to make use of the distance between positions and divide that by 20. And if we preview this, the torque added to the body object is going to depend on the length of the line. So a shorter line, shorter torque, a longer line, we have a much larger torque. Now with this, we are almost done. Now we need to make our counter objects work. For this, we need to make use of a variable. So in our begin event, we can press V and let's add a new variable. So our variable, we're going to call this counter and this is going to be a number. So this is going to be the maximum number of moves our body objects has. So let's apply this. And in our begin events we need to add an action to subtract from that scene variable let's add an action to variable and change number variable we're using the counter we're going to subtract one from it in the latest versions of gdevelop they have reworked the variables and this is what it looks like now and okay now let's link our text object to this variable counter for this we can create a new events group and let's drag this here we can call this text so in our text group we can add an action get our counter object modify the text and we can set the text of this object to our variable to our variable counter now if we preview this and i release my mouse it subtracts one from it there so we have one problem here and i we jump jump again and again now variable is able to go into the negative giving our body objects we need to take jump so we need to set the limits for this so in here once that mouse button was released let's add a condition our condition is going to get our variable which is our number same variable counter and this is going to check if it's greater than or equals to one now if we preview this jump jump again and again and now we have this and there we go now our body object can no longer jump because our counter is equals to zero now we need events to restart and end the scene we need our first events to check if the number of jumps is equals to zero if it's equals to zero we restart the scene we need another event to check if our body object is in collision with the end if it's in collision with the end objects then we know the player has successfully completed the stage and finally we need to check if our body object if it falls off the platform and goes beyond a certain y position if that happens we restart start the scene so let's go into our events and let's add a new events group this is in one let's call this and add an event in the group let's add a condition the first thing we need to do is let's get our variable which is a number variable and counter so if counter equals to or less than zero 
Then we add an action, so we start the same zone, same, change the same, and begin next. If our body object is in collision with the end object, so let's add an event, so let's add a condition. Let's check for a collision between the body. Now this is a physics point or collision, so collision between our end object. Now this is true, let's delete the end of object. And since we don't want the game to immediately restart as soon as the body object is in collision with the end, we need to check if our body object is sleeping after it has collided with the end. So to do this, let's add a new event. In here, let's add a condition to check for the number of end instances. So end, number of instances and the same. Now if this is equal to zero and our body object is sleeping, there we go. Then we can change the scene to begin. So since we don't have any other scene, we're just going to restart the scene. But if you have the next level you want to go to or the main menu, we can add that in here. And finally, let's add a condition to check the Y position of our body object. If the body object's Y position is greater than a certain value, we restart the scene. And we'll rent, add a condition, body, position, Y position. And if this is greater than 700, we're change the scene. So the same begin and here we go so let's go ahead and preview this in here my body objects if i drag this jumps let's try and collide with our object so you can see restarted once the y position was greater than 700 now let's try and collide with our end objects here we go so it was in collision with the end object, but it did not restart, so what be the problem? Let's see. Now this is not working because we need to add a physics to point all behavior to our end objects. So back in our begin scene, and behaviors, let's add a behavior with physics engine to point split. Apply this preview. Now we try a new large jump. There we go. A body object was in collision. And you waited till our body object was sleeping before restarting the scene. So there you go, there's the core mechanics of the game. Obviously there's still more to it. To graphically enhance the game, you need to add things like parallax and add the smoke effects. You need animations and a whole lot more. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And also leave a comment letting me know which tutorial you want to see next. So with that, I'll see you in my next tutorial.